The question that never fades when we lift our eyes toward the endless night sky. We are met not just with darkness, but with a boundless ocean of light, a cosmic sea where billions of stars burn and shimmer. Each point of light is a sun, many with planets circling silently around them. Each one a potential world, a stage upon which the story of life could be written. And as we gaze upward, a question as old as humanity itself rises within us. Are we truly alone in the universe? It is a question that has shaped civilizations. It has inspired myths, religions, and philosophies. It has been the subject of countless debates, painted in the cave art of our ancestors, whispered in temples, and carried forward through every age of discovery. For some, the stars promised gods and spirits. For others, they were the homes of other beings, angels, monsters, or perhaps distant civilizations. But across every culture, the night sky has always been more than a backdrop. It has been a mirror, reflecting humanity's deepest longing to know if we are unique, or if life flourishes elsewhere, waiting to be found. Philosophers wrestled with the riddle of infinity. Could Earth, so small in the cosmic scheme, truly be the only place where life exists? Poets gave the question wings, imagining other worlds alive with dreams, with voices carried across the silence. Explorers carried the same curiosity across oceans. Each new horizon was not just land, but a symbol of what might lie beyond. And scientists, armed with tools and reason, devoted lifetimes to turning wonder into knowledge. For centuries, this quest brought no clear answer. The stars remained silent. The skies gave us light, but no certainty. The mystery endured, untouchable, locked away in the unreachable distances of space. But today, something has changed. We are no longer bound by myth alone. We no longer gaze upward with only imagination. We gaze with instruments capable of peeling back the veil of the cosmos. Humanity now stands in an extraordinary era, a golden age of discovery, where the line between speculation and science grows thinner with every passing year. This age is not defined by ships sailing oceans, but by telescopes sailing the seas of space. And at the forefront of this journey is one of humanity's greatest triumphs, the James Webb Space Telescope. This is not merely a machine, it is a symbol of human ambition. It is the culmination of decades of persistence, billions of dollars of investment, and the relentless work of thousands of engineers and scientists from across the globe. Launched into the silent void, JWST now drifts a million miles from Earth, its golden mirrors unfurled like the petals of a cosmic flower. It is the most powerful observatory ever created, built with a single, audacious goal, to look deeper into the universe than any eye before it. With its vast mirrors and sensitive instruments, JWST acts as a time traveler, catching ancient light, rays that have crossed the universe for centuries, millennia, and even billions of years, before gently striking its sensors. Every flicker of light it captures is a message from the past, a story from an era long gone, when galaxies were young and the first stars were just beginning to shine. Through JWST, we do not merely look outward into space. We look backward into time itself. And among the countless stars, nebulae, and galaxies it has studied, there is one discovery that has stirred excitement like no other. A world distant yet strangely familiar. A planet orbiting a faint red star. A place that might hold the greatest secret of all. The strange world of K218b so, what makes this distant planet so remarkable? K218b belongs to a rare and mysterious category of planets known as sub-Neptunes. These are worlds larger than Earth, yet smaller than Neptune. Massive enough to hold thick atmospheres, but not so large as to become overwhelming gas giants. What makes them so intriguing is that no such planet exists within our own solar system. We know Earth, Mars, Venus, small, rocky planets. We know Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, colossal giants of gas and ice. But sub-Neptunes? They exist only in the systems of other stars. This makes k 218 b a kind of cosmic puzzle. It is not Earth. It is not Neptune. It is something in between, a world with characteristics both familiar and alien, 
a type of planet we cannot compare directly to anything we know. Astronomers suspect that such planets may be incredibly common, perhaps even the most common type of planet in our galaxy. Yet because we have no example nearby, their nature remains one of the greatest mysteries in planetary science. Sub-Neptunes are fascinating because they occupy a fragile middle ground. They are not small rocky worlds that can host thin atmospheres and landmasses like Earth. Nor are they massive gas giants that swallow everything in dense layers of hydrogen and helium. Instead, they might hold oceans hidden beneath cloudy skies or atmospheres capable of sheltering exotic forms of life. They are neither too small nor too large, they are planets of possibility. And K218b is one of the most promising of them all. This alien world orbits a star called K218, a red dwarf far smaller, cooler, and dimmer than our sun. The planet circles incredibly close to its star, just 0.18 astronomical units away. To put this into perspective, Earth orbits at one astronomical unit. If Earth were where K218b is, our oceans would boil away in an instant. And yet, K218b survives. It thrives within a fragile balance. Because its parent star is faint, the planet receives less energy than it would from a sun like ours. This keeps it from burning up, allowing it to remain within what scientists call the habitable zone. The habitable zone is the region around a star where temperatures might allow liquid water to exist, the single most critical ingredient for life as we know it. And what did JWST find? Signs of exactly that. The telescope's instruments revealed the fingerprints of water vapor in the atmosphere of K218b. This single discovery was enough to electrify the scientific community across the globe. For the first time, we had concrete evidence that a sub-Neptune planet in the habitable zone might hold one of the fundamental requirements for life. But the revelations did not stop there. JWST also detected methane and carbon dioxide, gases familiar to us from Earth, gases that are essential parts of planetary atmospheres. And then came the most astonishing clue of all, a faint but tantalizing hint of dimethyl sulfide, or DMS. On Earth, this molecule is not common. It is produced almost entirely by life, specifically, by microorganisms. Tiny plankton living in Earth's oceans release this compound into the air. If this detection is confirmed, it could represent the most compelling biosignature ever identified beyond our solar system. Imagine it. A planet light years away, larger than Earth, shrouded in clouds, and beneath those clouds, microbes drifting in alien oceans, producing the same molecules of life that exist on our own world. Of course, science demands caution. The signal of DMS was faint, detected during only two planetary transits. And extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Astronomers must confirm these findings again and again, from different angles, under different conditions, before they can declare with confidence that this is truly the fingerprint of life. Even so, the possibility is staggering. K218b may not have forests swaying in the wind, or animals roaming across continents. It may not have civilization sending signals into space. But it could harbor something just as profound. The quiet persistence of microbial life, thriving beneath an alien sky, proof that life is not unique to Earth. If this is true, then K218b is not just another planet. It is a beacon, a reminder that the universe may be far more alive than we have ever dared to believe.